I would like to introduce uh, Dr. Jolene Suleiman, uh, Australian Chair at the French University, uh, Department of Management. Uh, professional background uh, started uh, the Salawaita Khams al Ula at the United Nations, uh, followed by seven years' experience in the academic field uh, on the education level. Uh, Dr. Shireen uh, has a Magister in the Arts of Work in 2004 and a in France. Okay, Dr. Shireen. Uh, thank you very
what are you doing, why are you doing it, how you're going to do it, when is it to be done. You're answering your five W's in order to give the 360 degree of your project. One thing this document is not, it's not a commercial document, which means even if you're selling your idea, you're not selling it on an emotional base, you're selling it through cross-functional management um, information. Now, what does this uh, document do? Well, the first thing that we just said, it tells a story. The second thing, it has to include a marketing plan. And I think we just had uh, the opportunity to listen to a very interesting uh, marketing uh, presentation that gave us the flavor of the market. But marketing is going to be a very important component of a business plan because it's all about your consumer, your market, your segment, your understanding. It is a very important section. We're going to get there in a second. It also includes the financial needs. And uh, this is the solidity of your business plan. This is the basis on which you will be able to proceed forward or not. So this is a very important one. But most importantly is to identify the obstacles. And this comes as back of how reality, how, how clear is the reality of your environment in which you plan to actually perform your activities clear to you. Again, there are risks, there are uncertainty within a global environment. How realistic are you versus your implementation? And the more realistic you are, the more sure, not only uh, about obtaining the finance, but about managing these uncertainties. Now, the milestones is the phases of performance, not only uh, of your business, uh, but also of the business plan. Which means, it's going to take the phases of developing your entire system from inputs to process to output, enabling you to explain the entire vision of your activity. And as we said again, it is a communication tool. Now, there is something very interesting. You, you might think that as an idea owner, you are very clear about what you want to do. But the surprise is performing a business plan is also a discovery activity. Because through a lot of the technical methodological tools that you would be applying in order to answer to questions inside of the business plan, you will be discovering a lot of answers. Answers regarding, um, is your product answering to a real need? I mean, is this going to be a market value addition? I mean, is somebody going to buy your product? Is somebody going to visit your project? Is your service really going to be important in the market or not? This is going to be very important and it's going to come up from the information you will be combining from your activities. Um, even if your project is important, I mean, let's be frank, business is there to make money. Now, is your project going or not going to make money? I mean, you're going to take resources, you're going to ask for funds, you're going to go to investors, and you're going to use this money. Are you going to be able to produce money or not? How much you're going to spend versus how much you're going to make. This also is a discovery that is going to come up out of your business plan. Most importantly is the answer to the third question we have here. And it's related to, can you do it? You, you, the idea owner, can you do it? I mean, does the project idea goes hand in hand with your knowledge, with your experience, with your ethics? with your values, with your capabilities. Can you, can you not do it? You need to be very honest and true with yourself. There is a lot of commitment, and we're going to see in a while the amount of people that are going to be committed in your project. So, three questions and more are going to be answered in this discovering journey of developing your business plan, and it's all in one direction. It's creating solidity in your project. It's making sure that this idea is going to come up as a real product on the market uh, in the future. Now, the tricky question is, do I need a business plan? If I'm going to open a restaurant, if I'm going to open a university, if I'm going to import a product, whatever you want to be doing, do I need a business plan? If it is in every case, do I need a business plan? Well, we have a 
future reasons here that are trying to support the need for a business plan. Well, the first thing it's an evidence you can plan. I mean, basically, you develop this type of documents to go to a bank or an investment committee and try to convince them that your product is very important. And by the time it's on the market, everybody's going to make a lot of money. Now, if your starting point is that you can't actually plan, then everything is questionable. So basically, being able to produce an appropriate business plan is the first evidence that you can actually plan. It's going to help to sell yourself and your business, which means, in another terminology, market your idea in your place, but not using emotional um, advertisement material. You're going to use uh, management and find it, uh, methodological tool, proving the solidity of your ideas. It's also a map about the future. It's going to tell whoever is going to need it. What's happening today? And how are we going to be doing in three to five years? Yes. I see something and not much the other because you said at the beginning of this document um, that you are not going to sell your business and this document does not uh, sell your business. And here I, uh, I see to sell yourself on your business. It does not match each other. Very well. Let me uh, rephrase. The first word was commercialization. And by that, we are not, uh, when you're talking to a bank, when you're talking to investors, uh, you're not trying to sell the idea from an attractive point of view. But it is like a business plan, it is like a business card. When you're presenting to these people, you are representing who you are as a methodology, as a thinking from this product. So it is selling a concept of who you are, and this does not mean that the content is not going to be evaluated differently. So while it is a representation of who you are, it is still not considered to be a commercial document. The objective of this document is not to impress, it is to convince. So this is the difference between demanding to exactly how you see things are going to be. To obtain a banking finance, to obtain investment, to communicate, to be able to put the strategies, to make contracts, maybe even make mergers and acquisitions. So you need this document in order to be able to not to fall and continue the conversation. <laughs> You're going to need this document to make money. Who wants to make money? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> Straight the meaning of mouth. <laughs> more hands, more hands, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> now, the downsides of doing a business plan, everybody, you know, when you go to a bank and you go to an investor and you say, I have a very good project. They will say, okay, hi, we will give you time, but where is your business plan? And this is when you don't go back again. Because it's time consuming and a lot of effort is required. It's a highly professional document. An average time needed to produce such a document is five months. So usually people try to run away from the effort. But let's take a look at what's going to happen. Uh, in, in your mind, trying to avoid, you know, doing this activity. I mean, some people would say, I don't need one, I don't need a business plan. Because simply, I have everything here. I mean, how many people I'm going to recruit, how many money do I need, how long it's going to take to produce, everything is very clear in my mind. I don't need a business plan. And most importantly, guess what? I know a lot of people in the business that never produced a business plan, so why do I have to do one? Why? I mean, seriously, a lot of people are already working with bot management infrastructure. And yet, they don't even have an entry partner. And they're making money. So why would I be the one to invest all this effort in a professional document, going through a presentation, how to obtain grants? I mean, the answer is very simple. Look what's going to happen if you don't do a business plan. And before going into the details, just put things into context. You're living in a global environment. You are in competition. If you want to produce a product or a service locally, no one is forced to use it. Not anymore. Now, if we go to the details, inefficient control over cost and quality. Because basically, you never did this math. You never calculated how much cost is going to be needed to provide quality. Uh, poor inventory and stock control, underpricing or overpricing of your product because you never actually scanned the environment and understood how to put a realistic number. You never actually defended the methodology of applying a number. You 
never been there. We just put a number thinking it has to have logic. Failure to promote and maintain a public image. Poor relationship with your supplier. Failure to keep pace with the management system. Failure to, minima, to, make, uh, to, to achieve your, your, your tax obligation. Uh, lack of key personnel. Uh, failure to anticipate market I mean, it's a lot of negative framing sentences, all deriving from escaping from performing the infrastructure of a long-lasting business entity. So, basic thing. Before going into the details of the business plan, what we were trying to say is that business plan is very important. It's the starting point of any project. And by project, this can be a product, it could be a service. Uh, there is a very beautiful French say that says, La réalité est née dans l'imagination de l'homme. This is the, way, the other way around. If you have an idea, you want to see it in the reality. This is the process you need to put as an infrastructure to ensure its continuity in a very uncertain, and un uncertain changing environment. And like Kuklis say, changes become the norm. And you're trying to realize a business or a project or a service as an entrepreneur, taking all these changes that are going to happen in the future into a current plan. And this is what a business plan can help you to do. These are possibilities. I'll take your question after this slide. This is the last slide of this section, and so that we can chat together. Three ways to perform it. Now, the ultimate is actually do it yourself. Because um, you're, you're the idea owner, and it's very important to put your vision and your objectives and, and, and yourself inside of the process. And if you're unable, it's to learn how to do it, because this is not the only plan you're going to have to do for the business. So it's very, very enriching. Still, if you cannot, you can definitely borrow the experience from consultancy firms. You can ask help from someone. But the most important thing, as an entrepreneur, you're going to be working on your own, is to ensure that you have this product in hand. I'm all yours. OK. Uh, in, in the last page, as you said, I get someone to write your own plan. Mm -hmm. OK, buy, uh, buy uh, uh, a plan. The last one, write your own plan. Yeah. So I don't think, I don't believe that the first one and the second one is available. Because first one, if you ask someone to write the plan, he doesn't know anything about what I need to do. Okay, second one, to buy a plan. What he knows about the plan that I want to, 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 to add or I want to, to put or what is my idea about it and how long it takes. So I don't believe the first one and second one can be available for us. The last one is the only one that we can use that's in my own. Or, or this is my idea about it. So that is, that is my... Your comment. I'll get to you. Thank you very much. Yes. Just asking uh, some questions and answer it, and uh, at the end of the talk, you will uh, gain the respect. This is, this is very true as well. Now, I would answer is this related to the same story? No? Okay, can I answer it and get back to you? Okay, thank you. First of all, thank you very much for the questions. Uh, if I start with the gentleman question in, in the back. Now, as I agree with you that the third one is the best one, if you have the management knowledge, I mean, what we're going to see inside of the business plan section in a few minutes, you're going to be performing marketing activity, operational activity, management decision, finance activities, um, which means you need not only business background, but maybe a minimum of an MBA degree. So you have it good for you. You don't have it, and you do the, the, the business plan, ay, ay, ay. <laughs> So we said it's absolutely important if you have the knowledge to do it. If you don't have the knowledge, then you have to refer to the people that have the knowledge, and here is how it's done. And this is how consultancy is making money. Now you work with them. You provide them with the vision, with the objective, with the idea. And that they have a methodological procedure regarding market research, information gathering, competition analysis, uh, uh, and softwares that will enable them to provide, based on your ideas, how 
uh, your product needs to be produced, how the process will be done, how the design will be done. So even if they are not the ideal originator, they can absolutely develop to you a very professionally solid uh, business plan. Now, to the second gentleman, softwares are definitely a very important component of business planning. Particularly when we're talking uh, about statistics development, the financial part is completely depending on them. We just have to be careful about two types of software. There are softwares that are there to feed in aspects in part of the business plan, like the financial section, for example, and these are absolutely good. And there are other systems that promise you a business plan based on answering to a number of questions. And actually, these are not highly recommended. These are good guidelines, but you, and we're going to see them in a minute. They're just recommended from the banking point of view because somehow the don't know stumble. So if it's the food industry, and they don't like it. Because this means there is no enough thinking behind of it. Okay. So you have to be just a little bit careful about which software you're talking about. And the gentleman over there? I heard a lot about this is model compass. Business? Model compass. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a business plan. I've never seen one same page. Yeah. Can you please go with your idea and try to hear it? It's a uh, called business model compass. Okay. Okay. It's, uh, it's like a business plan. I don't understand it. I think it's more related to business, business process design. It designs to you how the work is going, it's the, the, the charts, the, the, the job identification and how the production is actually performed. Mm -hmm. This would fall under a specific... Which is, uh, when you have a business plan, how could you uh, safeguard it from being lost, stolen, or used again, or... Even if it's a big conglomerate or a corporate or a big conglomerate that's receiving it, uh, even if it's uh, an association or a non-profit, uh, the, there's always uh, a thing that has to do with selling my USP and what's in it for them and how can we just give them the carriage without the, the rest. Well, I totally agree with you that um, copyright preserving is a very big problem and in the region. Uh, there is a lot of procedures uh, that a lot of organizations try to uh, um, obtaining at least uh, um, accounts and paying for fees for visiting, trying to disable their website from printing and from saving, just trying to make sure that their own clients are not reselling their products later on under legal law to maintain, to at least obtain penalties outside of it. But the practice is very minimized. This is, I totally agree. The practice is very minimized. The only thing you can hope so is only those that produce the document can be the one to actually use it. So they can steal it, they can go to the bank, they can obtain the money, but they cannot run the business. Well, one last question, and then we continue. Then we continue the questions at the end. Okay, if you don't mind. Yes.
See, the thing is, it's a document you're writing. Generally, when you write a document, it's very important to know who is going to read it. So if you're writing a document that's going to be read by a physician, the language object is going to be completely different than if you're writing it to a politician, if you're writing it as an assignment, if you're writing it to the top management, or if you're writing it to your employees. Since we're writing this document usually to be granted um, funds and investment, then we are kind of talking to bankers. Now, what do these people like and dislike inside of a business plan to help you sophisticate things a little bit? Now, what do they need? The first thing is a very clear description of your business. And honestly, if you don't know what you're going to do, if you are the one with the idea and you cannot transform that into words, into a clearly transmitted paragraph dis describing exactly what you have in your mind, then you cannot make it into a reality. So, it's very important to know what is the problem that you have identified and how your solution will fit into the market. The second thing they always like to see is market evidence. So you think that importing skiing equipment is important for Egypt. Good luck proving that. Because without evidence, no money. So most importantly, you have a problem, what is it? Then how does the market prove by evidence what you have just said? Evidence of management capability. So if you have a brilliant idea, you're absolutely correct. We need whatever you have to say. But can you do it? Do you have the knowledge? Do you have the experience? Do you have the staff? Do you have the equipment? I mean, for God's sake, you know that this person, X, has a heart problem. Brav. You know exactly what's wrong with him. Again, excellent. Now, are you a physician? No, you're not going to operate. So it's very important to prove to these people that evident that, that you have the management uh, background um, necessary for them. And then an attractive financial arrangement. I mean, for God's sake, you're kind to ask me for money. The most important thing before I give you the money is to know when I'll have it back, how am I going to have it back, and how much are you going to give me in return? It has to be financially attractive because as a bank, I get what? Hundreds of business plans every day? Why would you be the one to be granted the money? So these are the things they like. Things they don't like. The first thing is obsessed people about their idea. I mean, and I totally know when you have an idea, when you have a dream, I mean, you talk about it in passion and a lot of feelings. And see, when you have a lot of passion, when you talk about business, people think that you're overwhelmed by the new idea and you're not realistic. And you don't have enough logic inside of your mind. You're just driven by the emotions and they don't like that. Because emotions is not going to pay back their money. So you don't need to eat away from your credibility by showing more passion than logic inside of your presentation. Unrealistic financial projection, like, uh, we're going to make millions in no time. Beautiful sentence, doesn't make sense. Every number in the output, in the profit, has to go from an input through an entire process. So unrealistic financial numbers again proves that you're not realistic about the market, about your readings, about the size of the segment. Uh, if you're not realistic, then how can we grant you money? Incapabilities of coming with details. I, I would really love to open a fantastic chain of restaurants. Yeah, what type of food? We're not sure yet. But where? And we're not clear yet. So what are you doing here? This is very important. Failure to identify critical risk, high this and risk. If you think everything is going to be perfect, then there is something wrong with you. Now, it's very important to be the one to say, you know, I have a very good chance doing what I want to say, I want to do. But there are going to be some problems. And here is my plan to overcome the problems. And the last thing is related to the pre-packaged or the already fill-in-the-blanks uh, template for business planning. 
Uh, this is a short car and here, it looks beautiful and professional, but it's not solid and you will not be able to maintain a strong business plan interview to defend what you have because basically you have not done it yourself, so you need to be very careful about that. Now, we're going to finish with the uh, business plan sections. The first is the executive summary, and we all know that top management approval is the most important signature on that document. <clears throat> Meanwhile, these people don't like to read a lot. So from one to three pages, tell me what's in it for me, and how are we going to get there? Mission, vision, objectives. Uh, the story from A to Z. You're communicating to the top management. If these three pages don't pass, then the rest of the document will not be developed. You pass from there to the company overview. Every company has to have a size and location, a funds to date, a clear mission and objectives. So again, when you're going to apply for a fund, you cannot say, we are seriously considering moving to the Gamo. Smart village in 6th October sounds to be perfect as a future location. If your, pro if your project is still in the future tense, you don't have an address, you don't have a phone number, you don't have a fax number, you don't go to the bank. These things have to be a reality before you go there to be granted finance. They are expecting you start operation tomorrow morning. Then we move to the most interesting part. I mean, particularly if the idea is yours, you cannot wait until you develop the section where you're going to talk about your product and your service. And here it has to become far enough. I mean, you should be able to create a prototype. So when we talk about the four Ps, done. The price, the place, the product, features, colors, size, availability, all the strategies related to your supplies, future integration, backward integration, aggressive penetration, what kind of pricing, how are you going to develop in the market, all of these needs to exist inside of your product and service section. And most importantly, it's going to be your understanding to your competitor for two very important things. Now, number one, as an entrepreneur, your competition is a very good and solid source of information for your production. He's a very good evidence and justification for your pricing, for your mechanics, for your uh, uh, distribution, for everything. These people already tried everything and you're just there to capitalize on the output. Most importantly, to distinguish yourself through differentiation by doing what they have not done yet. So your studying and your understanding to your competition is extremely important. Market opportunity, <clears throat> again, going back to the entire section, proving that your product, your service, your project comes from reality and back to reality. I'm not trying to force into a market a product that I like. There is actually a need, and I can prove it. I can have a definition, a size to that problem, and I know how to reach the people, and I have the perfect solution for it. And if you're not convinced, nobody's going to. So you're the first one that has to be clear with yourself about how much you can do it in order to convince others with it. Competitive reality, <clears throat> the existing market alternatives, who's else doing what, how, where. Uh, likely reactions, this is extremely important. And let me tell you, particularly in markets like ours, how are the people going to react? During the system, they're not going to cry and they're not going to tell you, yeah, the holistic part of the market share, no, they're going to react. They're not going to like your price or your product or your novelty or your market campaign. They don't want to give you anything. They would really like to see you get out of the market. So, by predicting ahead, how could they react by studying trend analysis in the past? How did they previously react? You will be able to defend yourself and prepare actions to that. The marketing strategy. And all this is the development of what we call the market facts. What makes a good market? <clears throat> okay, a good product, a good service, and when we talk about good, we talk about quality from the entry, the input, the process development, the output, the maintenance, and the feedback, the entire cycle of the production. Meeting the perceived need, so you told me you're producing food and I go there and it's not eatable. So, I mean, enough potential buyers, you cannot really develop an entire process and deliver a product 
uh, to two, three people. Does it make sense? You need to have clear understanding about the size of your consumer. The advantage of time is extremely important, particularly when we're talking about seasoning products. So if you're selling a product that is summer oriented, you need to do that before the summer. If it's for the winter, then it's before the winter. If you're selling ice cream and we are already in August, then you need to postpone to next year because your market is already shrinking by the time you launch. So timing is extremely important. The brand name and the brand name awareness, how would you like to be perceived and how are you actually perceived and how do you plan to manage the situation? the differentiation, the durability, and the communication of these information. This is a few resources you would find. Dash, these are um, websites helping you in market research researches. They're supposed to answer all these uh, previously uh, mentioned sections. Next is the management team. We just said one of the things you're going to have to prove is that you can actually do things. And one of the things we learn in life is that we cannot do much alone. We need to be in teams to perform. Who are you? Who are the people working with you? What are the jobs? What are the tasks? How are they planned? How are they organized? And how the things are going to be? What type of organizations? Centralized, decentralized, how the communication is going to be, what type of structure, what type of career path, job description, job specifications going to be required by the business plan owner if he's going to say, I will recruit people to do things. Now, all of these is in that section of your business plan. Financial sanction is the most exhausting one. And it's totally okay if you cannot do it, just go to some good friends, and they will help you a lot on that. Most importantly, you need to know that this section cannot be static. Okay? It's absolutely dynamic. It's not going to project at the moment. It's going to project today, tomorrow, three years, five years ahead. Balance sheet, income statement, break even analysis. The most important thing for me. You want my money? When I'm going to have it back? how much you're going to take, how much you're going to return, the cash flow, and all that in a projection from three to five years ahead. Financial issues that needs to be covered, your revenues versus your major expenses, your current financial availabilities. You need $1 million, how much do you have already? How much you're going to need? Answers. The investors need answers. This is a projection for three to five years with an annual plan. Things that people usually forget in this section, just to refresh your memory a little bit. Now, people tend to forget to post the living expenses of the entrepreneur. Usually, he's into the others and the planning and, 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 and. So, you know, this person is going to consume a lot of money. It has to be realistically transferred into management salary. The advertisement and promotion, the, the, the the, the, the expense, like uh, the phone, the postage, the taxes, the fax, the insurance, the legal issues, uh, the office expenses, the only certain sections that are forgotten in the financial section. And they are very important as evidence to show that you have all the 360 degree um, in your document. Finally, risk and contingencies. This is something we already talked about. Part of your realism is to know what can go wrong. And most importantly, is not only to say what can go wrong, but to have a plan B and a plan C for it. This section is extremely important. Now, before we conclude, also be true, there is always an annex to the business plan, which includes all the governmental, very long procedures to make sure that all the legal aspects have been taken into consideration. Now, if in five months all this is clear, um, you should be able to start your business plan. Any questions? Yes.
Well, the first question, I and mean, I find both of them very interesting. Now, the business plan is to launch. It gives the infrastructure. And from there, there is a lot of development that are going to take place in reaction to the environment. Such as, you know, you start to say, pricing-wise, we're going to use market penetration. Market penetration strategy, you're going to go with a price that's going to be uh, reduced after a while or increased after a while, you make that decision. After a couple of years, you have the right to review the strategies if not been successful. You decide to start by recruiting 20 engineers, and then you find yourself not in need for more than 10, or in, in, in a tremendous need for 30. So you make a revision, and over the years, separately from that document, you will be producing other documents which we call strategic management of the business. Uh, the business plan is beneath Okay? بتأمن لك عدد الأدوار اللي أنت حتطلعها. حتطلعها مع أورينتال ستايل، حتغير بعد ما طلعت الأورينتال ستايل، لأنك حتعملها جريك ستايل، لا أنت غيرت رأيك في الأمة حتعملها مودرن. There is no problem with that. Because this is an independent document that existed in a certain time, a certain condition. The fact to stay rigid to it will actually harm the business. Part of the components inside of the business plan to include flexibility. And this relates to the second part. Now, definitely, as an investor, I'm going to have to put some aspects in this contract to make sure. Is general going to take the money and change the business entirely the next day? But if it is a necessity, then you're going to come back and meet me and prove to me that the changes are going to be important and that there's a new document that's going to come out to ensure that we have a clear understanding of the direction we're both going to. Okay? Thank you. Yes. And if I have an innovation, and I started to work on it, and I found that some company or other company already started or uh, did it before. What can I do? This is the first question. Yes. Second question, if I have uh, an innovation, and um, when I started, I started with a small idea, and then it, uh, I finished uh, this one, and then I got another idea, and I want to, to, to increase and increase, Every time I put a, a fund or a specific amount or a specific uh, finance for that uh, innovation. So, is the business plan in this case working for me or not? Okay. Now, uh, related to your first question, by the time you're out, somebody else already made it. Um, I don't, uh, you, I, you know Kotler, the godfather in marketing? He said you have to run faster to stay in place. So it's absolutely normal by the time you're out, somebody else has done it. And this means you're just going to have to work harder on your, what we call, competitive intelligence, your knowledge about your competition, and about your differentiation. And you're going to move to your plan B, which if you have already understood that the high probability of creation, of substitution, inside of your industry is very high, so one of your contingency plans should be, how can I still differentiate myself beyond? So this is related to the first question. The second question, uh, I'm so sorry, can you repeat? Oh yeah, every time you're coming with a new idea, it's a new business plan. So if I launch the company with one business idea, every time I'm launching a new product inside of the company is a business idea, every time I'm opening a new department is a business idea, every time I'm opening a new service is a business idea. So each time you're doing a new production, it's an entire new business plan inside of your organization. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Uh, I have two questions. The first one about um, how to show uh, the customer need. How to, to show the customer need for this product. How to show the customer need? Yes. If there is a need for the product. If there is a need to the bankers. Yeah. Yes. Uh, if it is a new product, there is nothing like it. Uh, and there is no competitor. How to show that? Well, just to make sure, there are two things very important before your second question. The first is market research. Of course, you're just going to ask the people, you know, what you, how do you feel about this and this and that. And the second thing is that you're going to have to work very, very hard to what we call brand awareness. 
So basically, uh, when the mobile came up, uh, people thought they were very happy they already had a phone at home. Yuppie, too nice. And then they had the car phone. Yes. Okay. This didn't, it didn't actually stop the telecommunication field from developing farther. It's just that they had to study, and this enough, uh, this proved enough so that the R and D cycle was produced in one of the most expensive fields. Uh, and at the same time, they were educating people. You know, you can't create the need, but you can actually. underline the need. So when you are working in a marketing campaign, you start to tell the people. Oh my God, if your son is lost, how are you going to communicate? Oh, if you lost your way, how are you going to communicate? Oh my God, the phone is... And so you start to emphasize by pressuring a need to come up from inside the people. That's what we call uh, brand awareness. Yes, actually there is a problem. And the, the product is solving a pro this problem. But um, it's a new. It's really, it's different, it's new. And uh, maybe it's uh, available in other countries, but in, not in this market. Uh, and the second question about how to show a uh, competitor reaction, where there is no competitor. Well, if it doesn't apply, then you don't have to worry about it. But you just have to be careful that uh, if you have a very good idea and it's highly profitable and you're already going to take all the risk to be the first mover, that by the end of the week, you're going to have a competition. <laughs> and then you have to worry about what they're going to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes? Uh, yeah. I have a question. Uh, about uh, value creation. You say value creation is the, the most important. I agree with you. Um, then can, can you explain um, uh, to make a difference between uh, needs and want? Um, that's a question for you and uh, for Victor as well. Um, uh, often I, uh, I think a need versus a want, uh, um, we can make a parallel with uh, idea versus innovation. Um, can you explain uh, the difference between needs and want? Um, the second question is uh, how to say customer needs about a product service which does, doesn't exist. Innovation, for, for example. Okay, I'm going to try. Okay, the difference between needs and wants. Want is desire. It's based on a psychological idea sold to you and developing an emotion. Why needs are basically are, are found on basic instinct. So you need oxygen and you need water. But inside of the water possibility, which brand do you desire? This will be answered by you want. So I'm thirsty, this is a need. And I would like to have a, a Perrier, then this is a want. I, I, I know the difference, but. Um... How to, to, to say, uh, uh, to measure the uh, uh, needs, for example. Uh, because because uh, suddenly, um, uh, how to want, it's, it's okay, we have uh, uh, marketing sciences, but uh, for needs, it's different. Now, actually, what you're trying to uh, identify in market research, and I think that it, in this field, Aspa will be the professional, uh, is through market research. And based on identifying the possibility uh, for this need, because you don't create, you start developing a product that they would want. So people need communication, and they want a mobile. So the basic thing you work on in your market research is identify the intensity of need to communicate beyond the already available communication tool. And based on that, the R&D in the organization starts to develop the products that they sell through enhancing the desire to a specific tool, which we call the want. So I make you want something. Responding to a need you originally have as a human being. So I study the wants, I look to the availability, and I start developing on that. Okay? Any more questions? Yes? Yes. The first is about the less. I think the fact that I see the way they say it in my business. I said that the protection is 
for three to five years for that sheet. I think I'm not mistaken. For the financial uh, part for three to five years. Uh, I, I will give you some, uh, a small example of Nokia. For example, they have launched the B and Pro computing system in uh, May 2010. And uh, in uh, February 2011, they have made an agreement with uh, Microsoft to replace the B Pro with uh, uh, Windows Mobile. So, um, the, the, the changes in the sector are uh, uh, going very fast. So, how to move with, uh, with uh, uh, business plan on that? The second question is about the revolution. Uh, after the revolution, here I have a. Uh, a is uh, uh, A is uh, how to uh, change the business plan with the uh, changes that happen in the country every quarter. Uh, this is for the business plan, for the market, who is Dr. Asman, how to market ourselves in Europe, uh, knowing that uh, every every event or every incident in Egypt is changing the attitude of the consumer. So, uh, this is a, a hard question. Yeah. Thank you. Well, in responding to the first part, the product development um, is a separate issue from the financial section. So when we say the financial section needs to be projected for three to five years, uh, it's very simple because really relative to the industry and to the market of service, this is the average duration for break-even. plus interest. This is based on the product and the market. So I need to see this in numbers. This is why financial projection is usually from middle to long term planning from three to five years. Because a lot of information that I need to give you the money today will not come up before three to five years in the projections of your sales and revenues and expenses. Regarding your second question, which is uh, the impact of the revolution, this is why, and this is another very important problem and drawback in our community. There's supposed to be in every organization something called strategic management department. And when you don't have a strategic management department, you should outsource that from consultancy firm. They have professionals that come and study to you the probability of occurrence of such such events, and they put to you how are you going to survive. Now, in the case of usually the expense, even in multinationals here, in the case of the Asad domain, downsizing. مش قادر اسوف على عدد الموظفين ده مش الموظفين. هو ان فاكت هو لو كان جاي كونسلتنت عملوا ريستراكشرنج للبزنس كله بيزد اون ذا نيو ايفنت بيزد اون ذا برايسنج بيزد اون ذا سكريت هابن بيزد 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 هي وود نوت هاف هاد تو داون سايز. سو ستراتيجيك بلاننج اند باي ستراتيجيك باي ذا واي ستراتيجيك ميز انتو ذا فيوتشر. سو وين يو بلان انتو ذا فيوتشر يو تيك ان كونسيدريشن ذا بروبابيلتيز اوف انفايرمنتال تشينج putting scenario A and B and C, and this helps you to overcome when the situation arrives, so you are not in shock. Any more questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, um, one, one, come on. One, 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 Okay, I have one question and one comment. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and thank you now. The question is, uh, we saw the outline for the plan. So what about, um, uh, do we have different outlines? When it is a startup company and a well-established company, and I need to add a new branch or a new uh, innovative product or something, this is one. The comment is about the sequence. Uh, because I think um, the most important thing is to write the executive summary after you complete or you finish the planning. Excellent. Excellent. Well, regarding the first question, uh, business planning is uh, is extremely standardized. Extremely standardized. Now there is a little bit of difference in methodology between the American business planning and the French business planning. Now, what you have seen today is the American one. They are the founder of the business. I like to rely more on it. Uh, it is usually highly structured, and it is very much, or we can say almost, the 
say if you're opening an entire new company or if you're launching a new product. So this is really to do the first question. There will be more specific business plans you can definitely find if it's industry related, if it's service related, the difference between products and service when it comes to shaping. So there will be a level of, of, of tailoring, of standardization, of tailoring beyond standardization. Now, related to the second comment, I, I have to totally agree, this is true, the last written section is the executive summary because it requires from you to have already finished the entire business plan. Now, something else related to the sequence of business planning, that, now, as practice, I have seen that happen a lot. People tend to change the sequence that we have just seen. Now, sometimes people say, I feel more solid regarding the financial analysis because I am a financial analyst. So you take it because in a marketing and management team and so on and so forth. See, the thing is, and this is very important, the sequence of the presentation that you have seen today is a representation of the sequence of the business planning in general. It's very important to respect. This is علشان تقدري تقولي أنا بحتاج مين كموظف بكلفة بكفاءات معينة عشان يقوموا بالأدوار دي ولما أجمع مصاريف الإنتاج على مصاريف الموظفين على مصاريف الإنشاء أقدر أعمل الفاينانس سكشن. But there is a logical order between these sections if they need to be respected and it is very true that the last thing you write is the executive Uh, I believe you can determine uh, how many employees will do, will do this task or whatever. Would you put the design? This is my first, this is my com first comment. Second thing I want to ask you about is the reason that it, 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 it's very wonderful. Uh, but my, my question here is this business uh, business uh, plan is very close to analysis because when I do the business plan, I put the production, I put what the project will do, I put everything about it. Is this like um, uh, analysis document that will show the customer how it will work and what the, what it will produce and uh, something like that? Is this what you mean? And actually, this document, why it serves a lot, it includes a lot the customer and it includes how to develop the communication to the customer and is not usually addressed to the customer. So it just means that it's my analysis. This is a management internal dog. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for your patience. Thank you very much for your